Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. You know that I am very fond of code quality and in this video I would like to talk to you about a metric that kind of like shows or talks about the quality of our code and that is cyclomatic complexity. And I promise you that by the end of this video you will have a very practical and hands-on example and understanding on why exactly cyclomatic complexity matters and how can we use it to our advantage to write better code. But before we go into code, let's understand what exactly cyclomatic complexity is. At its core, cyclomatic complexity is nothing else than a metric that measures the complexity of a program by counting the decision points or the linear execution paths. Because it's more accurate linear execution path, but decision points is from my point of view a better way to understand this idea of cyclomatic complexity. Now, obviously, the lower the complexity of a program, then the simpler that program is and therefore it's easier to manage and it's easier to maintain. Now, you need to think about this, for instance, as a program in the end is just a huge number of decisions that the computer needs to take. And obviously, you define those decisions. Now, if you think a little bit about, for instance, a pilot and you are on a flight where there are no turbulences, now for that pilot, there aren't that many decisions that need to be taken. So the program, let's call it, is much easier. But if there are some problems with the flight, the thing is that the pilot needs to take a lot of decision in a very short time. And that's why if we think about the pilot as a computer or as a computer program, it means that the complexity increases. So it's exactly the same also in our programs. The more complexity we add, the more decision points we add, actually the complexity of the program grows. And if the complexity of the program grows, then it's way difficult or more difficult to maintain, it's harder to analyze, and it brings more overall risks. So the so how question would be, okay, but how do we actually add cyclomatic complexity to our programs? Well, as I said earlier, it's about decision points and linear execution paths. So this means that whenever, for instance, we add a loop, no matter if it is a while loop, a for loop, a for each loop, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Whenever we add a loop, we add some cyclomatic complexity. Also, whenever we use something like an if-else statement, we also add cyclomatic complexity. Now, be aware that you still add cyclomatic complexity if you use like ternary operators or other things, because in the end, also those are meant or, well, they depend on decisions or different decisions and execution paths that needs to be taken by the program based on a certain condition. So at the core, it's exactly the same. And this obviously also applies to switch statements. And therefore, whenever you also use a switch statement, you also add cyclomatic complexity. Once again, be aware, because if you use a switch expression, even if it kind of like seems more straightforward, behind the hood, it's still an if statement and it actually still adds cyclomatic complexity to the program. Now, this doesn't mean that it's really bad. Obviously, we need this type of control structures in our programs. The only thing that cyclomatic complexity measures is how many of such things we have in a, let's say, small subroutine of this program because that is clearly a sign that something can be improved there. So let's move now to a very small code sample in which we can talk about cyclomatic complexity and understand it better and how to calculate it actually. The thing is here that we have this very simple method which is this calculate discount and here we assume we get an int and age and the membership duration and based on that information we want to return some discount rates. For instance, if that person or that, that user is a senior, so if that person is over, 60 of an age, then we want to give a discount of 25%. But else if the membership duration, so if the user, let's say, is a loyal user, we still want to give a discount, maybe not 25%, but still 20. Now, if that user is not a senior and is not loyal, then we obviously don't want to give any type of discount, so then in this case we return zero. Now, the thing is that this code is very simple. I also say that it's very easy to understand, but Still, this code adds cyclomatic complexity, because whenever there is a decision that needs to be taken, there is some cyclomatic complexity involved. Now, to understand exactly how we calculate the cyclomatic complexity, and it gives us an idea on how we, for instance, can proceed with our program, let's move to a whiteboard and understand the flowchart of this program. So here's a graphic representation of the routine that we have just witnessed, 
So we have a start, which is the entry point, and then we have the flow of the program. The first thing that we do is we check if that person is a senior. So if the person is a senior, obviously then in this case, we want to give the discount of 25 and then return. But if it is not a senior, the next thing that we check if it is a loyal user. So if it is a loyal user, we just want to give a discount of 20 and then we return. Now, if it's also not loyal, the execution of the program actually goes further and it goes to this one. So we just set the discount to zero and then we want to return the zero. Now, the way that we usually calculate cyclomatic complexity, and once again, this is the most straightforward ways, but there might be some nuances to it in different circumstances to calculate it differently. However, most of the cases, just to have kind of like an, an understanding or a basic idea of how your subroutine or program is executing in terms of cyclomatic complexity, I think that is just enough. So the idea is that the complexity, so you see the C here, is so equal how to the number of edges mean minus the number of nodes. Now, if you take a look here, you see that we have kind of like edges. The edges are the connectors, basically. So it's this one is a connector, this one is an edge, this one is an edge. So we have here a total of eight edges. Now nodes are all the blocks that we have here, including the start and the return. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we want to calculate the complexity, it would be then here eight, sorry, that would be eight. So how minus seven, and then it uh, plus this two P. Now, this 2P, the P is actually or stands for how many subprograms actually depend on our subroutine. So if you have a function calling that function and another function in another module calling that function or the method that we have just witnessed, then the P will be 2 or it will be 3 depending on how many other modules call or rely on that specific routine that we want to calculate it. Now, for now, it's just the function or the method on its own. So therefore, the P in our case would be 1. So it would be 2 times 1. So if we calculate this correctly, it would be 8 minus 7. It would be obviously 1. And then plus on or plus. And 2 times 1 is 2. So 1 plus 2 equals 3. So this means that the cyclomatic complexity of our method, of our program right now, is 3. However, the good thing is that we don't really need to always manually make these calculations, but I think those calculations are very important so that we understand how cy cyclomatic complexity works. Because in Visual Studio, and I have the community edition, so it's nothing fancy, it's not something that's just in the enterprise edition. If you go on Analyze, you can have here calculate co uh, code metrics, and we want to calculate for the entire solution. And we see here that one of the matrix that we receive is the cyclo cyclomatic complexity. And we can even kind of like drill down and understand exactly, and we see that the cyclomatic complexity of this discount calculator method, or well, in this class and on this method, is actually three. Now, if you look at the entire cyclomatic complexity of the entire program, it just adds basically the cyclomatic complexity from all the methods that you have. So taking a look or, or, or looking only at, let's say, the, the highest level of the solution might not be a very good indicator, but if you drill down and look into the specific or different specific methods, you will see this complexity and you can come to different conclusions. Now, this achromatic complexity of three is not necessarily something bad. It's not a high number. And we'll talk about this just in a few minutes. However, the thing is that whenever we have too much cyclomatic complexity, we obviously want to try to reduce it. So how could we reduce, for instance, the cyclomatic complexity of this program right now? So one way we could do it, and I would just add here another method, which is the calculate discount, and I will just comment out this method that we already had, so we do it differently. Now, what we do in this case, we see that here we get a dictionary, for instance, that takes basically a tuple of bool bool and it returns an int. And then we have here, well, the different elements of the dictionary, like the age is bigger than 60 and false and so on. So all the possible combinations. And then basically we just return the discount criteria and we just pass in the predicate, which basically is or are uh, the values that we get in this method. And right now the program will execute exactly the same. But if we go here to analyze and calculate code metrics for the entire solution, you will see that the cyclomatic complexity is now one. So you see that 
just by removing kind of like this entire structure of if and else and else or if else if and then else then we have also reduced the cyclomatic complexity from 3 to 1. Now there is one point that I want to emphasize why I personally say once again emphasize this personally think that cyclomatic complexity is a metric that you should always look to when you write or before you just submit a pull request because you could definitely do here some improvement based on that metric or based on reading a specific metric. However, the important thing is that what I also do when I look at the cyclomatic complexity and for this purpose I will just comment out this one again. Let's just comment out and I will uh, uncomment this one and let's run the cyclomatic complexity or code matrix again we see that it's once again three. Now one important thing is that whenever I look at the cyclomatic complexity it usually for me at least is an indicator of the unit test that I need to write in order to make sure that I have covered all possible execution paths of the program. So in this case if I take a look at this I would already know that I would need at least three unit tests to have a good unit test coverage for this specific subroutine. And that's where I always look about cyclomatic complexity to also check or make sure that I have covered with unit tests all the different execution paths. Now it's true if you add unit tests, the IDE will also help you with this a little bit, but there might be some cases where the IDE doesn't get some of the things that need to be tested, and this indication is very, very important. Now, obviously this example is not very complicated because it's just a regular function. So I promised you to have a very practical look at this. So what we'll do right now, we'll switch over to another solution that I have created during some live streams that I did on this YouTube channel. And the solution is obviously more complex and we look a little bit into the cyclomatic complexity there. So here we are with the new solution. So let me just click analyze, calculate code metrics, and I will also once again calculate the code metrics for all solution. Now, what I can do here, for instance, I can look at different things like here are all the different assemblies that I have with the cyclomatic complexity and each one, uh, well, uh, has a higher or a lower, but these are all added values. Now, what I would do here, for instance, I see that uh, this one, for instance, this has 273 of cyclomatic complexity. Now, when I see this and compare to the other assemblies that I have here, I would say that this is a little bit high. So I can drill down and try to understand where do I have the cyclomatic complexity. And I see here that I have, for instance, this one is 71. And if I take a deeper look here, this is these are some functions. And I see here, for instance, that on this one, the on parameter set, this has a cyclomatic complexity of 12. Now, this is a little bit strange because if I look at the cyclomatic complexity of all other things that we have here in this specific class, actually the cyclomatic, the cyclomatic complexity is very low. But for this one, it is 12. So this, this is the reason why for me, this is a red flag that something might not be 100% okay with this specific method. Now, if we look at the method, it's this on parameter set. If you take a look at it, it's nothing too, very, too complicated. If we just have a, an, a, an if, we check if the input is null, and if the input is null, we just kind of like want to generate a new input with some values that we take from a student. And here we do a lot of different checks, and we just set the first name or string dot empty based on if the student first name is null or not. So once again, there are a lot of conditions that we have here. There's a condition here and virtually for every part of this one, we just have a different condition based on which we want to set a certain value. So this is why it actually behaves like this and it has this higher cyclomatic complexity. How can I solve and make sure that I bring down the cyclomatic complexity of this on parameter set method? Well, one way that I could do is I could simply have here a different method, like uh, let's call it helper method, that would do the creation of this input from student and we get in the student and we do exactly the same things here. And then we could simply replace everything that we have here with this input and here we just need to pass in the student and then we should be good to go. Now, if we run the code analysis again, we see that right now from 12s, the cyclomatic complexity for on parameter set is one 
but obviously we have this created from a uh, create input from student which has a psychromatic complexity of 11. however this is from my point of view exactly where the power of kind of like trying to refactor the code based on cyclomatic complexity is visible because right now what we do is we just follow some very uh, some very standard uh, coding practices to make our code better now obviously i would also need to reduce the cyclomatic complexity of this method here there are not a lot of things that i can do but for instance, this is right now for me an indication because my method has here a very high cyclomatic complexity. And this means that I could definitely, or am I using nullable reference types here wrong? So I would take some time and look into exactly, okay, how am I using it? How can I improve it so that I can go ahead without having to take a lot of decision basically for setting each property. And exactly the same thing you can do virtually for all your projects. Just run this code metrics, this code analysis, and look at the cyclomatic complexity of each of your methods and try to understand if you see methods that have a very high cyclomatic complexity compared to the other methods in the same class, then that might be a sign that that method needs to be refactored a lot and you should try to bring the cyclomatic complexity of it down. And this also brings us to understand exactly or better why exactly this idea of cyclomatic complexity matters. So first of all, it is a guide to determine the unit test coverage, as I mentioned more at the beginning. And this also helps us to actually determine more exactly or easier the risks that are associated with a certain program when we do a release. And obviously, as you have seen, when we did some refactoring to lower the cyclomatic complexity, we overall kind of like followed actually the some clean code practices so we have improved maintainability of the application and we have some improved read readability of the application that's why this cyclomatic complexity matters if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like it so that others might find it easier on youtube and if you have anything to say or just have a question or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section of this video and leave a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.